Hello, I'm Sergeant Major Vincent Santiago, Command Senior Enlisted Leader of the Defense Security Cooperation Agency. Today, I'll be speaking to you about opportunities for enlisted personnel in the security cooperation community. It's an exciting time to be working in security cooperation, especially for our enlisted men and women. While the enlisted footprint within security cooperation is small, it is growing. In fact, I'm the very first command senior enlisted leader that DSEA has ever had, and I hold the only enlisted billet in the agency's headquarters. Our director recognizes the important role NCOs play in the execution of security cooperation activities, and I would like to talk to you about the efforts underway to highlight that role and increase its sphere of influence. Let's get started. When I first arrived at DSEA, I was surprised to learn just how much of the work I had done in my career actually contribute to the security cooperation mission. I was even more excited to see how important this mission is in the greater context of our national strategy. Over the last five years, the security cooperation mission has grown into a tool of first resort in achieving our national security and foreign policy objectives. The number two line of effort in the national defense strategy is strengthen alliances and attract new partners. And security cooperation plays a central role in achieving that objective. You may be asking yourself how you and your current job contribute to this important mission. I'm here to tell you that every member of the SC community contributes to our strategic objectives at multiple levels. If you've ever been part of a unit tasked to work with an ally or partner to teach them how to operate or maintain a piece of equipment, that is security cooperation. If you ever participated in a joint exercise, working alongside our foreign partner. That is security cooperation. If you have ever supported a humanitarian assistance project or disaster relief effort, that is security cooperation. You, the enlisted trainers, logisticians, mechanics, technicians, and operators are in regular contact with our foreign partners conducting security cooperation activities every day. Your work becomes the foundation of the human relationships that strengthen our alliances and attract new partners. These human relationships contribute to the development of our partners' military capabilities and enhance our interoperability, which is critical in times of conflict. The relationships you build enable coalition operations and help share the burden with our own forces. There are over 20,000 security cooperation positions across the globe, filled by Army, Marine, Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard, officers, enlisted, and civilians as well. These positions are located across the department in organizations including the Office of the Secretary of Defense, the Joint Staff, the Defense Threat Reduction Agency, the Geographic Combatant Commands, and Security Cooperation Offices, just to name a few. Approximately 10% of these positions are occupied by enlisted personnel. One of my major tasks has been to learn their unique role in the mission and work with my counterparts in the COCOMs and services to increase their effectiveness across the community. In my first year at DSCA, I've had the opportunity to travel with our director to meet with many of our NCOs and learn more about what you do. I have also met with many of our counterparts in the international community and have seen firsthand the impact you have had in our international partnerships have learned about your perspectives, and have used that to start engaging with my counterparts across the community to spread the word about your success. I have also used these observations to advocate for the enlisted community as part of DSCA's Workforce Development Program. In March, DSCA published a video that outlined the details of the Security Cooperation Workforce Development Program. I encourage you to watch that video to better understand the multi-tiered approach we're taking to make sure the entire community, officer, enlisted, and civilian, receives the required education, training, and experience to ensure they are successful in this field. By developing a plan to certify the workforce, we are standardizing a career path for all SC personnel that we carry across all rank structures, all services, and all commands. Many enlisted security cooperators struggle 
because not all security cooperation billets are seen as career broadening roles in the military. At times, they can pull individuals away from their core mission. Workforce development efforts will ensure that instead of being penalized for an assignment in an SC billet, security cooperation personnel will have the opportunity to use that experience to grow within the community and their individual careers. For example, an enlisted NCO completing an assignment within a security cooperation office overseas should be encouraged by their service to use that experience in their next assignment, whether it be at a component, a COCOM, or an operational unit. The enlisted community gains significant experience through their direct engagement in security cooperation execution and can use that experience to add value to the broader community. As you can imagine, this is not an easy task and will require support and direct involvement from across the department. I have met with senior enlisted leaders from all the services. I'm here to tell you that they get it. They understand the importance of this mission and the value the enlisted community provides. They are just as excited as I am about incorporating enlisted into the community more effectively. I recently hosted the first ever DSEA SC NCO Symposium, which brought in command senior enlisted leaders from the Army G357, the Marine Corps Security Cooperation Group, PPNO PLU, and the Air Force's International Enlisted Engagements Office. The forum was an opportunity to share best practices across the services and develop a common operating picture as it relates to enlisted personnel management in the SC community. Together, we identified two efforts where we need to focus to make an immediate impact. First, streamline security cooperation education. And second, standardize security cooperation education across the community. DSEA is taking the lead on streamlining security cooperation education. We have released a series of videos on the DSEA public and MILTube website to educate the community. We will soon launch the Defense Security Cooperation University that will incorporate new technologies to push training content to our community so that all personnel don't have to travel to receive the necessary training. We're also looking at expanding opportunities to learn more about the different elements of security cooperation through partnerships with other institutions like the Defense Acquisition University and service professional military education institutions. The services are taking the lead on revamping their security cooperation education and training programs to ensure they align with DSEA's efforts. We want to ensure that you all receive the service specific information that allows you to flourish in your careers while ensuring you are meeting the requirements for a successful ascension in the security cooperation field if you want to go that route. In closing, as the first command senior enlisted leader of DSEA, I wanted to take a moment to remind you that you are valued members of this incredible workforce. The work you do matters, not only to your current unit, organization, or office, but also to the Department of Defense and our national security interests. I'm very honored to have been selected to represent you during this incredible time in security cooperation, and I look forward to meeting you as I get out and about. I want you to know that you have an advocate and you are being heard. Thank you for your service and the example you provide. Stay in the fight.